Hello and welcome to HD Calx. I'm Rick and in this video we're going to have a look at how we can solve one variable stats on the TI-84 plus graphing calculator. To do this we'll use the stat key that looks like this located here, the vars or variables key that looks like this located here, the second function key that looks like this located here, and the 1 and 2 keys with the second function of L1 and L2 that look like this, located here. For the examples shown, we'll use this data set, 60, 20, 10, 10. To get started working with this data set, first we press the STAT key here. That brings us to this menu. And we want to select the first option, which is Edit, so we press Enter. And now we see our lists. This is where we enter our data set. We'll want to use L1, and you can see there's already data in here. So if I want to clear that and put my new data in, I start by scrolling up so that the L1 is highlighted, and then press the Clear key. Press Enter, and our list will be cleared. Now I can go ahead and enter our data into this list. So 60. 20, 10, and 10. There we go. That's our entire data set. When I'm done with this, I can exit out of my lists by pressing the second mode key, which is quit. Now to look at my stats, I press the stat key. That brings us back to this menu. And if we scroll over to the right one and select the first option here, which is one var stats, it'll bring us to this. It's asking which list of data do we want to use. Well, we entered all our data into list 1, so we want L1. You can see it's already in there. If not, you can enter it by pressing the second function and then the 1 key. You can see if I press second function 2, it puts list 2 in there. If I press second function 1, it puts L1 in there. So that's good. Scroll down. Next is our frequency list. We don't need to use this because we entered our entire data set in into L1. If we have many of the same number, like say we have a lot of tens, we can enter a frequency so that we don't have to type them all out, and I'll look at that later in the example. For now, we'll leave it blank. So we scroll down to calculate and press enter. And it gives us a result. First, we have x bar, or the mean, which is 25, which is correct. Next, we have the sum, which is equal to 100. Yep, the sum of squares, which is equal to 4,200. Yeah, there we go. The large sigma x, or sample standard deviation which is 23.8047, etc. Yep, that's correct. And the population standard deviation, or the small sigma x, which is equal to 20.615528, etc. Yep, that's correct as well. Next we have n equals 4, which tells us there are four items in our data set, which, yep, that's correct. And if we scroll down, we see we have a minimum x value of 10, a first quartile of 10, a median of 15, a third quartile of 40, and a max value of 60. When we're done with this, we can exit the screen by pressing the clear key. Now that's great for taking a quick glance, but what if we want to use these values in a calculation? Well, we can get them by pressing the VARS key here, scrolling down to number 5, Statistics, and pressing Enter. That'll bring us to this menu here, where we have our N, X bar, Sample Standard Deviation, Population Standard Deviation, and if we scroll over, our Sums and Sum of Squares. 
let's say we wanted to find the sample standard deviation variance. Well, to do that, we can scroll down to the large sigma x, or sample standard deviation, and select it. We see the sigma x is now on our screen, and if we press enter, we see we get the value. We know the variance is the standard deviation squared, so if we place the sample standard deviation back on our screen and square it, press enter, we see we get a variance of 566.666, etc., which is correct. We can also get the population standard deviation and population variance this way by going to the bars, scrolling down to number 5, or we can just press 5, selecting the population standard deviation so that it appears on our screen, and then squaring this and pressing enter, and we can see we can get a variance of 425. Alright, what happens if we have a data set with a lot of numbers that repeat multiple times and we want to be able to enter that quicker? That's where we can use our list2 to enter a frequency list. So if we go back into our data by pressing STAT and EDIT, we're back in our list menu. If we clear this out, we can start by entering the individual pieces of data. So for example, we have 60, 20, and 10. Now we have two 10s in here, but we only want to enter it in once, and we can do that. We have each unique piece of data entered, and then if we scroll over to list 2, we enter the number of times each piece of data appears. So 60 only occurs once. There we go. 20 only once. 10 occurs twice, so we'll put 2 there. And we're done entering our list 1 and list 2. If we exit out of this, now we go back to our stats. Select one variable stats. Keep our list 1 as our data set, but then we scroll down to frequency list and select list 2 for that, and we press second 2 to enter that in there. There's our L2. Enter, calculate. We see we get the same results. So the calculator knows that that 10 occurs twice. Alright, I hope this helps, and good luck on those tests out there everybody!